Welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there. For our first deck today, uh, which is going to be Mardu Angels. So we're going to be trying out some Mardu Angels here. Can we run one or two Unbreakable Formation? I don't think we really need Unbreakable Formation. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think we really need that. Um, but... So we have we had a uh, donation uh, to be able to play some Mardu Angels, and that's what we're going to be doing here. So we've tried the last couple of days. We had like a mono white sleeve, and then yeah, Mardu is the name of the color combination: red, white, and black. Um, we we played mono white angels a couple of days ago and had some good success with that. And then we tried adding a little bit of black for Sarah for the scales and Mortify, and that one worked out too. So let's see how it works with. Uh, going three color with Mardu, where um, we get another angel with Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice, is our our um, main angel that Red adds. But the other the other things that we get is we get a really premium removal spell in the two mana slot with Lava Coil that exiles, so we get rid of Rekindling Phoenixes and get rid of like Jade Light Rangers and Midnight Reapers and you know all that kind of stuff from Soul Tie for good. But the main thing that we got over here is Deafening Clarion. Awesome card against aggro. Really just a premium three mana sweeper that can also give our large angels lifelink if we don't have a Lyra on the battlefield. Um, we can you know just give these things lifelink and really uh, turn around races. So that's what we have here with Mardu. All right, so we're going to have to get some sleeves here for Mardu. Jolner, did you have a did you have a choice of sleeves that you wanted to use for the deck? Otherwise, I think we'll probably just go with Boros. We haven't used the Boros sleeves yet. If if I don't see anything in there, Boros, cool. All right, so let's let's give this a try. Boros. Yeah, obviously Boros. I guess we should probably change the avatar too. So we'll do have Boros and then isn't there Kaya? Somebody there we bothering go. you? I'll I was make like, where's the white black her. planeswalker? Kaya works. All right. We have to get have to uh, get some good luck there. That's awesome, Jelly. You got some MeUndies to support the channel, but they are legit. Probably ordering another pair soon. Yeah, they're they're awesome. They're really, really good quality underwear there. Yeah, glad you're enjoying them. So we've had nine people order so so far. So if we have one more person order, we'll be doing another 12-hour stream like we did yesterday. So five lands, two removal spells. Probably not so good. I mean... Having the removal spells is nice, and the the main reason why I'd want to keep the hand maybe is because of Arch of Arazka here. What are y'all thinking about this? You know, so like, we we get to make sure we hit our land drops, which is an important thing with the Angel deck because we have a, you know, like we have a lot of fours and fives and um, everything like that. We get to make sure we hit our land drops. <laughs> we got the flood emote, but then we got a couple of keeps. We do have the means for survival, and then we got card advantage. It's not a wonderful hand, but I'm I'm kind of liking this. Thank you so much, Daniac. Yeah, welcome to the channel. Glad you're liking the stream. Hey, D Jam. Ooh, playing the elves. So. We should probably start coiling things against the elf deck. And while Elvish Clan Caller seems like the card to kill, I actually think it's Land War Elf. I think like Clan Caller is not is only like basically Clan Caller can pump up some other stuff, but if you keep them off of mana or try to reduce the amount of mana they have. 
They probably have like Beast Whisperer. They're gonna play the next turn. Oh no, Vine Mare. That is not a Beast Whisperer. <laughs> so it cannot be blocked by black creatures. Don't have to worry about that too much. Resplendent Angel is a great draw. Nice, inside man. Made the Grixis discard. You're liking that one? Oh Every no, not Mortify. Sometimes Conan. restoration means retribution. Deckmaster, good call. Thanks, JRC. Yeah. Is our opponent just playing... Uh, that should be M19. Because that was an M19 also. And then M19, M19, M19. They're playing set constructed. Alright, so here, let's go ahead and get rid of the clan caller just for the fact that I know the Vivian's gonna die now. But overall, I wasn't really that worried about the clan caller, to be honest. I didn't want them just to be able to chump block with it, though. <sighs> Not dead yet. Yeah, the land of War off did turn out to be a good call. Slowed them down a turn for sure. All right, I hope they don't have a plummet. All right, good job, Resplendent Angel. Rivals of Ixalan. That's not Dominaria. Or M19. That's not M19. I thought they were playing an M19 deck. Yeah, we're at the point where I just don't even need to take the, the time to mortify. We're just going to kill them with these flyers. So we're at plenty of life. You know, we can take a hit from Big Mama Galta, NBD. It is Big Mama Galta. All right, we'll grab a couple settles, and Clarion seems pretty decent. Kills Vine Mare and the mana creatures, and doesn't kill big stuff. Definitely want Mortify. That kills big stuff. We have Spyglass for Vivian. That could be a thing. Maybe. We know we don't want a, Vi a Danto Vanguard. That's the one card that we know we don't want. All the rest of the cards are like... Fine, just fine. I mean, Tithe Taker isn't special, but... It can do a little bit of blocking. Immortal Sun's got, I think, is probably going to be too expensive. Yeah, Tithe Taker may be a little useless. The problem with taking out Tithe Taker is... Curve is really high. We're, we're definitely relying on Clarion Settle. Best thing Tithe Taker does is like chump block a Null Hide Ferox twice. Yeah, opponent probably has Ferox and uh, Carnage Tyrant and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Kaya Killing Birds is probably a little too slow for us here, especially on the draw. I think I'll find trying this though. Cause yeah, the even though our curve is pretty high, the two drops really don't do a whole lot for us. Let's good call a really a. 
Uh, I'm keeping because of settle, but Aurelia is the worst of our angels. And then we just start with both of our Aurelias in hand. And all tap lands. Basically, this, this hand would be a mulligan if we just didn't have settle, but settle is such a good card that keeping. Okay. Shockman's good. That is true, Yud. We have... That is a very good point. We have seen a lot more, like, players with starter decks in this league the last week or two. Do you think that's... Do you think that's um, because of the last major patch? I think it's like funneling newborn players into... I guess I want to put that right here, I guess. I guess the text... Like, the, this thing kind of makes it harder to read the text. I'd probably just not let them draw a bunch of cards off Beast Whisperer. Yeah, I saw that so there's a new already. blood artist creature. That can't help you now. Certainly looks pretty good. As far opponent has another removal spell, I want them to use it on Aurelia, not Lyra. You can't stop nature. Diamond mirror on green. got me. So now Vivian can kill Lyra if they want to kill the Vivian. Gift of Strength. This is Give the creature plus three, plus three, and reach. So I don't think I really need to like hold up settle for a bunch of like one ones. I do want to get that that two three out of here that the Thorn Lieutenant that can pump up and be a whole lot bigger. But I think I'd rather wait on the settle for them to find some big uh, spooky scary monster that we need to use it on like a Carnage Tyrant or maybe even a Vine Mare or anything like that. Just don't think we need to use Settle yet. So that's why I want Aurelia plus Lava Coil. So we're going History or Angel of Grace.
History works better if we, you know, draw another land be able to history and have settle up. Angel of Grace can start killing them faster. We can use Aurelia's buff on Angel of Grace and hit for seven lifelink. Not lifelink, sorry, seven vigilance. Was the what I meant to say. Yeah, either way, it's still three turns for us. If I put it on, you know, if I put it on Aurelia, or basically if I attack with both, we're, we're, we could attack for nine, and attacking for nine would have put them down to ten, where I don't, I don't have the ability just to deal another point of damage. So it's going to be three turns, so might as well attack for seven, and then seven, and then seven, to make it three turns. Yep, and Settle wins the game like we thought when we kept the hand. And they'll have a lot of lands if they chain off a bunch of creatures with the Beast Whisperer. Including like Kral Harpooners or something. That's kind of like the strength of... Angel of Grace as well is our opponent seen Angel of Grace. They think that we may be holding up another Angel of Grace. They want to be able to, you know, attack him with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, nope. We had to settle. Yeah, Diamond Mare wasn't going to change it where three turns was going to... Like, they couldn't gain enough life with Diamond Mare to change that. Not a bad turn, though. Alright, Mardu Angels gets a. picks up a first win. It's a GG emote. There we go. GG's. got two black red lands which we don't have a ton of black red lands in the deck but we definitely have some we have 19 white sources though which is i think i think 19 white sources is enough for resplendent angel and history and stuff but we we certainly need the white sources so that's an unfortunate hand to mulligan yet again did not like that one lander with the higher curve this one though could work out for us if we were able to curve out here. You know, going Vanguard, History, Seraph. That's pretty nice. Opponent with those Soul Ring sleeves. Not as cool as. Our Boros sleeves, though. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good call. We're, we're going to need to charge our draw here. All right, playing elves again. Well, this time elves. Actual elves. Yeah, resolve. We need this land. Come on, deck. Where's the land? We need land.
Got there. This would certainly look better as Knight of Grace playing defense. <laughs> Soul Ring sleeves seem a little silly in standard. Yeah. I can see that, but they're fine. They did a really good job of like showing this as like a metal, I think. Well that's bad for me. This is what triple Lanor Elf can do. What? How do they not attack? What are they doing? Cool. That's going to be a lot of cards. Can we get our deafening clarions, please? I think we're just going to be basically cyborg in the same way we just did. tapped out. Alright, so we'll get those in. Mortify, Clarions. This deck, I think I'm more interested in playing Kaya against our opponent's deck here than like Green Stompy with like a bunch of um, a bunch of bigger creatures. But then again, I'm also more interested in playing Tithe Taker. Hmm. Whoops. I don't know what. We're gonna just not play Tithe Taker. Yeah, I guess not. So Kaya gets rid of Llanowar Elf and Pelt Collector. That's about it. But then can also gain life by getting rid of other things. No, I'll just go with the Tight Takers. Yeah, I I certainly I'd have fun with that at tournaments for sure. Uh, I was pretty chatty uh, during tournaments at at times, not all the time. Sometimes I was, and I you know let my opponents know what I had, kind of thing. Like kind of like streaming, you know, like thinking thinking out what the plays are gonna be. Or, yeah, opening hands or something like that. Certainly would give opponents a lot more information than what most people do. But, no, that's why, I, that's, that's another thing about being a streamer. It's just I'm, I'm not really that worried about whenever people stream snipe me. I just don't think it's that big a deal. Same kind of thing there. So, going... So we have to go Shock Shock, but if we curve Resplendent into Aurelia into Lyra, that turn 5 we're going to gain a lot of life from Resplendent and Aurelia. We'll make up a lot of the life back. So like, basically we'd be going to 15, next turn 13, play this, take a hit down to 8, the next turn 6, play Lyra, 
gain um, four, five, six, six yeah, uh, gain a lot. Uh, we'd be gaining five, ten. Yeah, beginning like uh, minimum ten. I think eleven. No, ten. We gain ten back, so we go back up to sixteen. And plus, we get another angel, and we have all these life linkers, so we should be good. Could go with the coil here to be safe, but <laughs> no, I don't think so, Farouk. I don't think I've, I don't think that's not a thought that I've ever really thought. Do you know how many tier one decks there are? Not really. Oh. Uh, stop playing Vivian. Would you like to see what's left of Scala? No one said restoration was painless. Oh, that makes our life worse. It certainly makes our life our life worse. That makes our life better. I've seen worse. We don't have don't have the resplendent angel to get the other life linker. Okay, nice way. Did you did you use my referral link and everything there? And if so, send me the send me the just wisp send me a whisper of your order number and stuff and I'll mark this down cuz um on my side I don't get Meundies is the only thing Cool. That's the only one that I don't get a notification right away, so I don't get to don't get that upgraded over the weekend until over the weekend. So that means I'm gonna mark you down. That means we have gotten to ten out of ten people ordering me undies for a twelve hour stream. Correct. The, correct, Rex. This is not live. Correct. Let's just put it on the Lyra here. Yeah, I'll attack for 10 here. Uh, no smoke pipe. Nope. So we're going we're going to be coiling the uh Steel Leaf Champion. All right, anyway, so that's going to be another 12-hour stream that we'll be doing here. Perfect. So basically... <clears throat> yeah, just writing... So writing that there, Sway, just in case I forget. Um... Hey, what's up, McCarty? All right, so we have to determine what day we're going to do this. So let's see, today is Tuesday. Um, don't want to do it tomorrow. Yeah, they attacking for six here. They can deal six to us. So not going to do it tomorrow. So I guess Thursday or Friday, because I you know need to need to rest a little bit after our last twelve-hour stream yesterday. So. We'll have a, a straw poll that I'll uh, go ahead and get set up now, and I'll just kind of have this um, set up here for the rest of the stream. When should we do the 12-hour stream for the... Goal. 
this will be it'll be noon to midnight eastern time like always so we'll either do it Thursday or Friday or I guess Saturday we can do any of those Thursday Friday or Saturday um, I do I got a minute to sideboard that's enough I'd I'm good in here so we'll just keep this yeah you can get a five dollar donation deck that day too as well sway or any any other time you want but yep for ordering me undies you get a five dollar donation deck yep absolutely all right there's the poll in the chat you can vote and you can vote for multiple days what day should we do our next 12 hour stream No white mana again, so I have to ditch it. Ugh. So they're going down to five. Their hand's not going to be that good. So the problem with keeping this kind of hand, basically because of Settle, I kind of want to keep. We've got 19 white sources. We have Settle. The, the problem with keeping this kind of hand, though, is you know we could basically have nothing. Um, and... With our opponent having a five card hand, we just want a, a pretty we just want like an you know, even a below average hand. We want to like at least have a functional hand. I guess that's what I'm thinking. We want to have a functional hand. We don't want to just throw the game away, kind of thing. So I think I'm supposed to mulligan it at this because of that. We don't need to try to keep a risky one, I don't think, against a five card hand. So we're gonna mulligan. Oh gosh. This isn't really getting better. Hey, what's up, Zerf? Going really well. Uh, we just got a the we just hit the me the first me undies goal, so we're going to be doing a twelve hour stream here pretty soon, and so we have a poll for what day to do that, either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Yeah, I think this is better than what we had before. McCarty said, I was finally able to obtain a playset of Arclight Phoenixes and built Mono Red Phoenix for my weekly Monday night modern event. There were 20 players showed up, went 301 in the four round cap, got 24 buck store credit for the $5 entry. Heck yeah. That's a that's an awesome Monday night. Congratulations, McCarty. Way to go. Oh gosh, this is like the worst land. Three hands and we didn't see a single white source when we have 19. I mean, it's hard to ditch Blood Crypt, right? And it, kill, it casts the Lava Coil, but it doesn't cast History or Resplendent. Nero says bottom, and I, I can kind of see going bottom with this. If one of our next two cards is not a land, though, we just won't even be able to cast Lava Coil, and we'll feel really bad for putting it on the bottom. I think I may keep it on top. Yeah, that's true. We're, we are doomed without white sources. That is true. All right, let's go bottom. Hooray! White source. All right, we'll stone rain our opponent. Hey, what's up, Sculpt of Mind? Hmm. I think I let them have the white source for a turn here and drop the history. Yeah, absolutely, Cryo. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you're good. No, I did not do the pre-order bundle. I think... Oh, I think I'm going to have enough wild cards and coins to buy packs that I'll have all of the cards. That I'll be able to get all the cards from War of the Spark. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know. Tough call whether to coil or resplendent angel here, I think. Alright, well they have, they also mold the five and they have two dead cards with Founder Renewal and Helm of the Host, so. Oh, we need, we have triple white source too, so now all we need is any land and we get to activate Resplendent Angel. Yeah, I assume that there's going to be another way to get the special Liliana besides just that pre-order whenever the set comes out. I hope so, at least. Yeah, that's that's the other reason. Basically, making sure that it's like really difficult to ever equip this host was like the main reason to coil the land war off there. That is, a, that is a good point, that if there is other ways to get those, the other Liliana, it does lessen the value of the pre-order. Yeah, but I'm surprised, yeah, I'm surprised you get Liliana also and not Tezzeret, because Tezzeret's the buy a box promo in paper, so wouldn't it make sense for Tezzeret to be the, the promo for pre-ordering also? That doesn't, that's kind of weird. We're going to be 2-0 here. They should have like these be like their voice. It should be like Kaya saying, good game. Or Kaya saying, oops. Or Kaya saying, you're good. You know, like... Does Hearthstone do that? Oh yeah, the opponent is playing much more than 60. That's 56. Plus 4 is 60. Yeah, 67 cards. All right, two and O. Oh. Again, if you're just joining, we hit our Mandy's goal. We're going to be doing a 12-hour stream. Vote for what day you want to it to be. Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. If, like, two of them work, you can vote for two of them if you want. Visit the poll there. We are running, a, like, a more creature version Creature heavy version, basically like our our first kind of Mardu Angels, not the sweepers in the main. Lean in Vanguard. Who wants to, like, really break into, like, a van anyway? Like, do you really need a, a guard just for a van? Like, where is this van at? Is it, like, down by the river? Therefore, you need a guard? I don't know. I'm skeptical. Did 
Doesn't seem like the noblest of professions. Seems like you need a really big knife to be a vanguard. No, my resplendent angel. So they're getting rid of that Resplendent Angel puts them three permanents away from um, ascending with these Snubhorn sentries. So hoping they have no more Conclave Tribunals. I will definitely block here. Really? It just felt like that was a good time to use this card. Was this card a charge? I'm pretty sure that's a foul. You can't charge. It's definitely a foul. Did the, did the ref not see it? <laughs> yeah, this van must be pretty special. They have Adantos over there guarding the fan as well. Yeah, pretty sure I should get... I should at least get the ball. If I'm not getting two shots. Oh, I, my, my feet weren't planted. Alright, Angel of Grace coming on in here. Playing Angel of Grace first before Lyra makes sense also because the, uh, like, next turn we'll be attacking for six lifelink because it's five, like, they're both five power, but the Angel of Grace gets the, gets the buff, so we're going to be attacking for six lifelink next turn instead of just attacking for five lifelink by playing the Angel of Grace first. Plus we get the su surprise block factor as well. What do you do? ETB is a creature gets plus two plus zero and gains first strike. No, oh, so that's how that snubby hat was a two three. Like this cavalry dude is just awesome at running practice. You know, if like you're like trying to learn how to take charges and everything, and you need to run some drills, this is the person you want. Great at practice. In game, not so much. In game, we just got like a little 2 3 or a 2 1. <laughs> but can sure run to practice real well. Alright, attacking for 11. Yeah, go. Yeah, we, you should have gone black and decker for the drills. That's. I think that's where people would expect the drills to go. And uh, another Angel of Grace. So, having these Angel of Graces does incentivize my opponent to swing out if they're like worried about an Angel of Grace blocking like one creature. So, the same sideboarding we've been doing. It's just against Mono White now. Tithe Taker is definitely a lot better here, though. I, I want to keep the Tithe Takers. So, what am I cutting? And I want the Kaya also. What else can we possibly cut? We could cut, like, Contempt, I guess? Contempt seems pretty good. Aurelia? Aurelia blocks well. History of Benalia? History kind of blocks well, too. I'm not cutting Resplendent Angel, of course, because Resplendent Angel ends the game in the late game. Why is Tithe Taker good here? Because it slows the opponent down, you know? just It just usually trades with something, like, we, you know, trades with a one-drop and uh, can, you know, potentially trade with, like, two one-drops or something. I 
no, it's good. Slowing the opponent down for like your, you know, you we need like two drops to slow them down that make these other things better. You know, we need to survive. That's what it does. It helps us survive. I guess I can get rid of contempt. Maybe cut a land. We're on the draw. Probably don't need the Archer Raska. We have 26 lands in the deck. We can probably go to 25. Being on the draw here. All right, and then last card. Tithe Taker or Kaya? I guess I'll just cut a Tithe Taker really quick because I'm running out of time. If it wasn't for Deafening Clarion, this would be a pretty good hand. Plenty of 3D stuff. But Deafening Clarion is probably the best card in the hand, so... The Tide Taker just, you know, like, slows him down. You know? Can like trade with the Sky Marcher Aspirin and then half of a Hunted Witness and I don't know, it just kinda does its job. Now are we gonna draw another land? I did. That's fine. I did board out a land. So hopefully we don't get too punished, but we have 25 lands still. So land tilt. Opponent did not hit a land drop either. Drop. Dang. That's kind of unlucky. Drawn four cards and no lands. Where's the lands at? We gotta warm these up. We need gold medals. Gold medal. to tilt. Alright, game three. Yeah, we might not have late lands, but the sleeves are sweet. All right, back to 26 lands on the play. And taking out Kaya. Yeah, I'm just going to take out Kaya. I not sure if I was going to keep this hand, but I think I'll settle on it, even though it's not the ideal hand, I suppose. Nah, it's looking pretty good until we have to play these lands that are not uh, 3D. This could have been Kaya. Yep, we will settle for the wreckage. I don't like how this more. I honestly don't really like this. This, I know a lot of people love this Mortify, but this is my least favorite of the 3D cards. I don't like how it's just always moving. All the time. 
and like it's still moving over here. I don't I don't like that. I like these other 3D cards that aren't just always moving. They're just like full art. I like like the full art more than that, than that. So we saw our opponent, what, had a charge game one? Is that something I'm going to need to play around? It's not yet. I'm not sure what I want to do next turn. You know, like, this is kind of... It's a little bit difficult. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do next turn. We'll kind of see what happens here if I... Because I, I do want to get rid of this Adanto Vanguard as soon as possible. But do I try to get more value out of Settle than just Adanto Vanguard and a Hunted Witness and they still have four cards in hand? Yeah, Settle and Unlimited is really rough, for sure. Oh, same. It's... It's it's a huge oversight to not have all of the check lands as the 3D art. Dragon Skull Summit and Hinterland Harbor not being 3, 3D arts where all the other lands are. It's just... That's a huge oversight. That's... It's... Very surprising that that was, that they're not 3D arts. It's it's kind of baffling to that that would that those would just not be 3D art choices. Yeah. Meanwhile, Death Bloom Thalid. Yeah. <laughs> Are they just sitting with Settle over there? Like, how are they just not playing anything? I feel like they're going to settle my creature. Guess not. They better not have, like, Seal Away. Something lame like that. Okay, good. Yeah, I was putting myself dead there. Or, I guess not quite dead. They had 10 power right now.
So it looks like another Conclave Tribunal like is likely. Yeah. So I do not want to shock with the Blood Crypt. Uh, Summit's a good card. Summit allows me to play this Tithe Taker and still have the saddle up. That works out pretty well. Yeah. Unfortunately, these unbreakable formations and make a stands not so good against settle the wreckage. And third aggro deck in a row means third win in a row for Mardu Angels. Yep, we got the Foil Chemistry's Insight and Skewer the Critics. We played some of those, uh, the Treasure Constructed format on last Friday. Speaking of last Friday... Yeah, I think our opponent was going with the earlier GG saying that I was going to win GG because even, like, that attack is not lethal kind of thing. Like, that attack still let me attack. The, like, I think they were saying GG because there wasn't a way for them to win anymore. I think that's what they were saying. But speaking for next weekend, or, like, this upcoming weekend, you get to vote of what day you'd like me to do another 12-hour stream. We got to 10 people signing up for MeUndies. We're doing a 12-hour stream to celebrate that. So I just put the straw poll in the chat. Vote for either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, which day works best for you to watch from noon to midnight Eastern time. We're pretty close to doing a sub battle countdown as well. Yeah, that sounds good, Sway. Aggro deck number four. We played two mono green aggros and now maybe two mono white aggros. That's what it's looking like. No land. Pass turn. There you go, Green Hat Man. Getting that so uh, Green Hat Man, get your hype votes in the channel. Getting our sub battle countdown down to 38. So question was, which of the Angels decks are best for you? I think the one that I'm most excited about right now would be the Orzov deck we played yesterday. Really liked that deck. So Seraph is better here, but I kind of want to just keep slamming Resplendent Angels so that on turn 6, I can go Resplendent Angel, Lifelink, and then make a whole bunch of Angels. Even though, like, Seraph and History are, like, better at blocking their Histories. And in case they have a con, like if I attack with that angel, they could just go Conclave Tribunal, and then swing in with a bunch. So I'm gonna just keep them both in, both back. That's a very fair point. Deputy of Detention is a card that is a reasonable card to for me to be worried about, for sure. Yeah, Deputy, that's a card to be cognizant, or to have cognizant 
of Senyo, welcome to the channel. Thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you kindly. Hmm. Four, eight, eleven. I'm going down to seven. Then I'll have three, four, fours to block with. Alright, maybe it's better just to play the Seraph and not take so much here this turn. Guess we don't need to. I like I think this should be fine. We're getting two free four fours instead of three of them, but we get a block this turn. We're going down to ten instead of going down to seven. We get a couple more one ones that do some decent blocking. Some of the Ixalan lands do have full arts, but not all of them. Dragon Skull Summit from Ixalan and Hinterland Harbor. From Dominaria. I think I think those are the only two check lands that don't have the full art and it's very baffling of why they wouldn't have the full art but they don't So we're back up to 20. We're going to have four, four fours, and two one ones back on D, because I'm most likely not blocking with this 3 3. I guess the 3 3 keeps their two ones and one ones in check, though. Hmm. All right, you block there. You block there. You block there. You block there. There, there, there. Alright, going to game number two, where we have our sweepers to bring in here, so the matchup just gets better for us. So do I cut anything for this Kaya? Still don't think so. Is Kaya better than History Banalia? Though, kind of may be honestly. It's kind of weird cutting history, Benalia. Though, I think Kai's better than Angel of Grace. No, right? Like Angel of Grace's like ETB effect can be pretty big in this matchup if they have like a a huge turn like with the with the history Benalia triggers coming off, and you make sure that you don't die. And then you play a Lyra, then you untap in Lyra, or if they have like Unbreakable Formation or something. Well, basically, okay, is is this history better than Angel of Grace? The thing is, history doesn't block very well. It's better than Tithe Taker? I don't know, I'm gonna try it like this. I'm gonna take out one history, Benalia. I know it's kinda weird, but does not block very well and that's that's basically what we want it is it's like you know three mana you get a two two and then the next turn you get a two two 
and the whole attacking part of it doesn't matter too much. Double Angel Grace. Well, if we do nothing but draw lands, we're going to be doing pretty good. I guess we should probably go to four. I don't know. Clarion can just win this. What do y'all think about this this hand? Should keep this or not? Definitely considering keeping. Clarion's, you know, maybe our best card. And Lyra's are awesome and everything. I don't know if this... This is definitely not easy. Yeah, we'd have to draw a lot of lands in a row. Yep, absolutely. But if we cast like Clarion on turn four, so if we if we have three out of four lands here and cast Clarion on four, we're gonna be okay. Like is like a four card hand gonna win? Like winning on four cards is really difficult. I'm pretty sure this is a keep. Yeah, we're at 26 lands, so three. It's basically 50 50 to get a land each time. Getting three out of four with a scry is not that hard. See, so yeah, I'm going to take it. Okay, starting with the Isolated Chapel. We can do this. We can get a lot of lands. Starting next turn. Our opponent kept six. They didn't mull like way down. It's unfortunate having the isolated chapel on top for the scry. I'd kind of rather have like one of these cards on top where you scry to the bottom and then draw the chapel. Hmm. This didn't go so well. Now, if our opponent was going down to five, I would go down to four. Ugh. So we're on the play now. Definitely makes History Benalia better on the play. I think on the play, I'll take out another Tithe Taker and bring that History, bring that history in. We're not mulliganing when we see a bunch of lands. <laughs> no black mana, but that's okay. I'll take Coil Clarion. So I only want to draw some angels here. I don't... I don't want to just fire off Clarion immediately and then have my opponent play a bunch of stuff right after that, right? So... Definitely need to wait on this Clarion. Cinder, thank you for subscribing on Twitch Prime. Thanks, Cinder.
Don't think it makes a lot of sense to do anything here. Uh, playing Tithe Taker still does not kill. Um. Tithe Taker doesn't like, you know, block the Snubhorn Sentry or anything like that. Could certainly play some more things to Clarion since we don't have a very good hand. Venerade Luxodon was the one thing that would keep the Snubhorn Sentry from dying. So Venerade Luxodon was a card I didn't want to see. We're going to Shock next turn. Am I playing Tithe Taker or Shocking next turn? I guess that's both. Am I playing Tithe Taker and Shocking next turn for Sarah for just playing the Blood Crypt? Bone did a really good job of playing around Clarion by playing the Luxodons before history. Don't always see that. It's a good play by the opponent. Hoping no tribunal. Hoping that last card is not tribunal. Good. Not tribunal. Does it make sense to attack? Not really. It, it obviously makes sense to attack if our opponent does have removal spell. If they would just, like, you know, play Tribunal this turn, then I'll certainly regret not attacking. But I expect they would have played Tribunal last turn if they had it, so they would have to just top deck the Tribunal here. They have Unbreakable or Martial always. They always have it. Yeah, they've had it. They've had an awesome, awesome hand here. You know, four, four one drops, double history, double Venerate Luxodon, Martial. Like this is this has been an awesome hand. Lyra is very strong though. We'll see if Lyra is strong enough to keep our opponent down. If I make those blocks, I'm taking. 16 and gaining 10, so taking 7. I could take 4 less by having the Tithe Taker block the sentry. But I think this is fine. Oh no, Harav, we're still... Lyra still makes us very favored to win this game. Our opponent's going to have to draw something for the Lyra. If, like, Battlefield, we have this. It's whether our, our opponent top decks something for Lyra or not. <clears throat> but just what's on Battlefield, we have this. Like, if we both draw lands, the rest of the game will win. I think I think Lyra can beat that Adanto the first fort, I think. I guess that's not true. With Benelish Marshall out, I guess if we both draw lands the rest of the game, our opponent will eventually win with his first fort. Never mind, that's not true. But we have better draws in our deck. We have a lot more powerful draws. I still don't regret not playing Clarion on turn three. It does. It did let them 
cast Luxodons, but against anything else in their deck, saving it was good. Because they just had a 1-1, one, one, two 1-1s one, and an 0-3 oh, on the battlefield. And so against cards like Benelish Marshall, um, History Benalias, you know, like, I'm certainly more scared of, like, History Benalias. Because even Luxodon, as we saw, like, the first Luxodon wasn't really that big a deal. It's like the second one, and then all the other stuff to go after it. I honestly don't regret waiting with that. All right, Angel of Grace is awesome. Yeah, Resplendent Angel would have won us the game too, but Angel of Grace is, does a great job. That's a that's a wonderful draw. Lyra? Yeah, no, Lyra has first strike. That's why I didn't die in those other ones. Do I want to trade two of my 1 1s for this vampire token? Not really. So we're taking five, gaining six here. So we should be moving from 12 to 13. Now we can start attacking for 11 lifelink in the air. Good. could leave one of these back, like Angel of Grace, back to help protect Kaya. Getting the pressure on them. Yeah, we'll just exile the 6-6 six -six with Kaya. Yep. That's the plan. <laughs> I'm gonna make you suffer. Let's get those out of the way. We're back up to 24. Do they not have the mana? Yeah, they should have the mana to make a 2-2 two -two lifelinker, right? They just didn't do that. I understand you are in need of support. All right, so that should be lethal. Our opponent can only gain 3 life now. Oh, they can go get the they can go get the sky marcher aspirant to block. I guess. If they tick up, they're dead. They I will up. lend you my strength. We go to 14, we have exactly 14.
Yes, he could exile the Sky Marcher with Kaya. Yeah, we could have done that. I got rid of the 6-6, six, six, though, but yeah, we could have. All right, so two mono green opponents and then two mono white opponents. Four aggro decks, four wins for Mardu Angels. <laughs> You're welcome, King Tull. Okay, final boss time. We have an extra life as well. Uh, I thought we were playing against Bon Jovi whenever out of the corner of my eye when I looked over. Hey Baz, yesterday four color Gilgates went pretty well. We went four two with losing the last one to a mirror match, which can of course happen. But it's just a a really powerful deck. You know, we got to gain a whole lot of life against like the red deck with our the white angel, and you know, just go over the top of people with a bunch of huge hydroid crises. And yeah, it's just a pretty strong deck there. Breeding Pool Opt. Looks like our final boss is going to be Wilderness Reclamation. Which is not, not, not a good matchup for the poor angels. Don't usually hit hard enough to win before Reclamation starts comboing off. But we'll see. We have a, a good curve here, so maybe this can work. You know, we have... Tithaker, History, Seraph, and Aurelia. It's a pretty decent curve. We can't really do anything about fogs, though. Except for make them cost more mana with Tithaker. That'd be cool, final bosses cause I do blues, that'd be cool. Phoenix is doing okay. It's not, you don't see it, I guess, you don't see it uh, getting played a ton, but it's done well at really big events, like big name events and everything, and so, yeah, getting Blue Red Phoenix, that's uh, not a bad place to be. Aurelia hits harder than Seraph, so that's why we're going with Aurelia here. Yeah, drawing Mortify was our best draw. It's possible I should just not even play Aurelia and just hold up Mortify. I was hoping just to wait one turn and play Aurelia first, and then, you know, after this, hold up Mortify. But maybe... Because the problem is we wouldn't have had lethal next turn if I don't play Aurelia. Because we would, they would be at 12 right now if I didn't play Aurelia. And we'd be attacking for 10 the next turn. So now now we have like lethal this turn. Plus we have like mortifies now. All right, so attacking so we can get this mentor trigger on. Oh, I should have played Blood Crypt. Not Godless Shrine, because we already have a Godless Shrine. Yeah, we'll keep all of our lands different. Joy! Last deck Saturday. Final deck changes before War of the Spark. Alright. So, we're going to have Gruul Dinos from Joy last Saturday. Alright, got you down. Thanks, Joy. So, 
So we're going up to uh, adding 20 there. We're at $69 out of 100 because all donation donations this week are going towards... Uh, going towards these cosmetic upgrades. Uh, we'll go with UFG. UFG, thank you so much for that Twitch Prime sub. I went with UFG because those are the capitalized letters. Thank you. Alright, so what else are we sideboarding? So, okay, we're taking those out. We're going to take out the Contempt. And maybe leave Contempt in. I'm going to take out Seraph of the Scales. Or Angel of Grace, Lyra. These are the cards I want to take out. Lyra, Seraph, Angel of Grace. I think I like I think I like Lyra the least. Let's try that. Izumk. Izumk. Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub as well. Keeping those hype boats going. Alright, we will keep this, especially with the Mortify. Okay, a couple questions here that we had. We had... Oh, that's a great draw. Uh, are you doing pack openings when war releases on arena? Yes, absolutely. We'll we'll be doing that King Toll says do you have to apply in some way for the sub battle day? No, just got to be there Basically gonna do like I'm gonna decide like so basically you just have to be here in chat and I'll just do like a kind of like a giveaway thing and just so basically it'll just, you know, it'll be, like, if you're ready to battle, you'll just type in that you're ready to battle with, like, whatever word. I think I'll probably just use the word battle. And then give everybody, like, like two minutes to say they're ready to battle. And then we'll just pick somebody randomly. And then whoever's, then, you know, whoever picks, we'll battle them. And then after that match, we'll do it again. And everything like that. Oh my gosh, we have so much hype going on here. We have Kel33 hitting that sub button as well. Thank you, Cal. I think I need to mortify overplaying history. I'm going to I'm going to keep mortify up. Click end, and then we just had a donation. What was? It? Let's see. I missed the donation. What do we have? Hey, Joyve with the just sending another eleven dollars. Thank you, Joyve. Making this an even 20. All right, so just one more donation deck. If you have a donation deck you want to see sometime this week, perfect. Even 20 now for getting another gem pack. Thanks, Joy. So it looks like our opponent is kind of like really wanting to protect their wilderness reclamation. I just never, never tapped out. Hmm. I should have just played history last turn. Gotten more pressure. Been able to hold up Mortify after that. I think that was a mistake.
Yeah, the history would have got countered last turn, but I should have just done that last turn. Don't know if we can beat a second reclamation. We'll see. See if they get off these chemistry's insights. Oh, they had they had the wilderness reclamation on turn three this game on the play. They had growth spiral on two. Reclamation on three plus counter spell backup, and now another reclamation on their turn five. Now they didn't play one on turn four, they played another one on turn five. All right, let's go with Tithaker and the Danto Vanguard. Uh, if I only had the land drop here, I could go land Mortify. I would like to do that, even though they have two... Wilderness Reclamations. I'd like to get rid of one of them. We do have Argos Bloodfast in the, si in the sideboard. This is after sideboard right now. I hope they have a third counter in hand. I hope they have a. I would, I would take it if their whole hand is counter spells. I would take it. Because counter spells won't keep these vanguards from killing them. It's, it's when their hands like you know a bunch of nexuses. That's kind of the problem. I'm sacking all these memorial geniuses is good, for us. Getting all these blue sources out of there. Hmm. Do I want to kill the Reclamation? The problem with killing Reclamation here is if they have, like, I don't know, Biogenic Ooze plus Fog. Kind of dead to that. Could save it for Ascanta. That's true. Could do that. So I wish we had one more mana where we could pass and like be able to Angel of Grace on their end step if we couldn't Mortify. Yeah, they could have like a Krasis. For sure. Couldn't get a little bit more pressure on the battlefield. So they do have a little bit of life gain. Something like a Krasis or something. Some blockers for Vanguard. I want to get some more pressure on the battlefield. Sure, we have lethal if they do absolutely nothing, but it's it's not likely that they do absolutely nothing. But if they have, you know, even like a blink of an eye. Or, yeah, Krasis here. That gains them two life, so now they're out to seven, so this was not lethal. So now we mortify the Krasis. We could attack for lethal. So we'll see if they have... See if they have Nexus. Hopefully not. Okay. Yeah, they could still have Nexus.
pretty surprising if they did not have Nexus by now. Going through half the deck. The turn that certainly hurt me here was turn three. Held up Mortified turn three. Didn't even cast it. Should have just threw down History Banalia. History would have got countered, but it would have got one of those counter spells out of their hand from earlier. That was the the turn that I should have just put more pressure on the battlefield. I was thinking our the opponent was going to tap out on my end step for Chemistry's Insight or on their turn for Chemistry's Insight before Wilderness, but they never did. They My opponent played it pretty well. They were very patient. Hey, Dirk. So now they have infinite mana. They've already spent 7 mana this turn. Now they spent 11. I have 4 <laughs> lands. They spent 11. So some people say there's an opportunity cost or like some kind of cost to playing Wilderness Reclamation, but the one re Reclamation they played this turn just gained them three mana. So it was just like a, a card that gained them three mana this turn, and then we'll gain them seven the next turn and seven the next turn, and, you know, one more if they just start playing lands. All right, yeah, we're, we're dead now. That's Kanta flips, and, yeah, we don't get another turn. Why do I have a Tithe Taker out of the deck? Get that thing back in here. Tithe Taker is really good. I, don't, I just... Yeah, that should not be out of my deck. I don't know why it is. I got the Seraph. Yeah, it takes a card slot for just gaining tons of mana. And then since you have tons of mana, then you... Draw lots of card, unlimited cards with all that extra mana. Yep. I think your life total has to be in an increment of four to kill yourself with the Danto Vanguard. Because I don't think you can pay four life when you have three. Why do we have four, four, five here? I ported out all like a lot of those angels. Ugh. We have five total four mana plus angels. I guess we have the Aurelius too, so we have seven. Uh, we have three of them in our opening hand. Kind of want to mulligan this. Well, we should have mulligan. We do need to draw a land in one of the first two draws, though. We should have Mulligan because of Mortify, but we're basically a four-card hand of God of the Shrine, Isolate Chapel, History, and Mortify. Like, these are the only four cards that really matter. These cards don't matter. Turn off Memorial to Genius. They have double Reclamation. I guess I could choose Memorial to Genius and Mortify this Search for Ascanta. That's not bad. Can we beat their hand if we... Um, 
if we get pretty fortunate, we're going we have to draw a land here. Okay. And here we go. Next turn they play Ascanta plus Tap Land and we kill the Ascanta. They do not have lands. That's a way we could win. Them not having lands. is a good draw. Gives us lethal next turn. We're going to have lethal next turn anyway by just playing Danto Vanguard, but... So, assuming they have a fog here... There's a fog. And we did it. Five and O, including beating it. Simic Nexus. It only took took them not drawing a single land the entire game, even with casting multiple ops, and uh, they played the the two three that you draw a card, you can play an extra land. They played that thing to cycle because their opening hand that we saw had three lands in it, and they never found a fourth. <laughs> Don't get spoiled, it'll never happen again. Yeah, basically. But it happened this time. So, I'm not mad that it happened this time. We didn't even draw our duresses at all. Forgot we have four duresses in the deck. Those would have been good to draw. But, yeah. We got we actually got it done. That's our one of our worst matchups, for sure. And one that we won't win very often. But can't be too mad at it. So there's Mardu Angels, also with a 5-0. We did get four very good matchups for our first four. First four. We had two mono green uh, and two mono white. Both of those kind of decks are exactly what we want to be playing with this Mardu Angels. Um, especially Mardu here over some of the other versions of Angels because we have Deafening Clarions. That's a really big card to have access to in the aggro matchups and we did so yeah had some good runs there so we had four good matchups and then we beat our worst matchup for the final boss so Mario angels still strong all these angel decks are kind of coming back for us they've been doing having good success with them there's kind of a little less soul tie in the metagame these days which has helped out our angel decks less chupacabras and vivians killing our angels Hostage shakers taking them and stuff. 
All right, so that's Marty Angels. If you're watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.